Thanks for tuning in today for preparing for Roma Next Generation and the CSBG Annual Report. We're focusing on Module 2, CSBG Eligible Entity Expenditures, Capacity, and Resources. Our presenters are Jeannie Chaffin, Director of the Office of Community Services, Janae Bieland, Executive Director of the National Association for State Community Services Programs, and Barbara Mooney, Director of the Association of Nationally Certified Roma Trainers. And again, we'll be reviewing Module 2 on CSBG Eligible Entity Expenditures, Capacity, and Resources. Thank you, Lauren. So this is Jeannie Chaffin at the Office of Community Services, and I'm just going to highlight the sections that we'll be looking at in this module presentation. So we'll be looking at Section A, which involves local agency CSBG expenditures, which really tries to capture information about how CSBG dollars were used at the eligible entity level. We'll be looking at the local agency capacity building uh, activities that go on and trying to capture those. And then finally in Section C, local agency resources administered by the CSBG eligible entity. So this provides an opportunity for the eligible entity to show the a range of federal, state, local, and private dollars that are coming into the community action agency that are really being leveraged to address uh, conditions of poverty. Section C, we're not going to talk too much about today because really nothing has changed in Section C uh, from the CSBG IS. So this module, Module 2, is very similar to Sections E and F in the current CSBG IS. We've really not made a lot of changes to this section. If you think about much of what we're going to look at today, are um, items that were in other sections of the CSBGIS. So we have pulled in some different information into this section, but the uh, amount of really completely true or new items in this section is pretty limited. We are doing some important things in this section, though, to lift up agency capacity that we're going to talk more about uh, during our presentation. So this module is, is predominantly completed by eligible entities and then reviewed and evaluated and analyzed by the state CSBG lead agency. Section A really collects important information because it's information we need to meet the congressional requirements for the CSBG Act, and that's how were CSBG funds utilized uh, during the reporting period. And it's based on categories that are outlined in the CSBG Act and are very common uh, to all community action agencies. So Section A is very important. Section B is also important because it allows us to capture information about how agencies are using CSBG and other dollars to uh, build agency capacity. And then Section C, as I mentioned, allows us to um, collect information and to really uh, have the CAA report about all the range of funding uh, that they're leveraging as part of being a community action agency. So here is a nice table. You're going to get used to these tables because they're going to be in all four of the modules uh, that we're recording uh, on the annual report that does a crosswalk between what's in the current CSBG annual report module, and how does that link up to the CSBG IS survey that all community action agencies and states are using today. So the first section, local agency CSBG expenditures that I just mentioned, that crosswalks completely with Section E, CSBG expenditures by service category. We've made some little tweaks that we're going to talk with uh, you about today, but for the most part, they're very similar. Section B, local agency capacity building. Now, this is interesting because it does crosswalk with a lot of the CSBGIS survey, but as you see, it um, really matches up with some elements of the IS that were in the NPI. So there's uh, information pulled from NPI 2.3 about community engagement, uh, from Indicator 3.1 about empowering low-income people, uh, information in Indicator 4.1 about partnerships, 
And then indicator 5.1 about expanding opportunities through community-wide participation. What all those um, sections in the NPIs have in common is they're much more about outputs than outcomes. And so because it's output information, we've pulled it into this module and really are lifting up the work that agencies do to build their capacity, which may not be uh, a result or an outcome, but it's very important work um, and needs to be uh, demonstrated and shown and, and, uh, and have a place uh, for that information to be captured and analyzed at the state and national level. And then again, Section C uh, matches up exactly with what we've been doing on Section F, which is resources administered and, and generated. So with that, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into uh, the first section, and Janae is going to do that for us. Thank you, Janie. I think one thing that was really um, interesting while working with the network and as that slide that Janie just described, we'd always had agency capacity as a core strength of the network that we wanted to talk about, but it was spread throughout the whole CCGIS report. So one thing I think that has been a great enhancement is that as with Module 1, focusing on the state, now we have a whole Module 2 that really focuses on the strengths of the local agencies and the importance of building agency capacity and what that means as a whole. We are going to be doing a lot of instructions to go with this, but because there have been changes, we wanted to offer up some brief kind of instructions on each of the modules that will help walk everybody through the changes. So this is an example of some of those instructions, and this is relevant to our CCG eligible and seek expenditures, capacities, and resources. When we started to look at this, it was something of, um, that the network had been reporting on for many years, the CCG expenditures by service categories. So service categories are deep into who we really are. It is found in the CCG statute. But as we started to dig a little deeper into things that we've always been reporting on and look towards the future as well, look towards the possible authorization of DCG, we recognized that some of the categories that we had, such as self-sufficiency, weren't adequate for where we wanted to go, that we needed to be able to really capitalize on the work that we were doing. So we worked with the network, we worked with a lot of fiscal people as well to figure out what was going to be the new domain that we needed to be able to track. Some of the areas that are brand new is that with CCG being a block grant and being used throughout the whole agency, that there was the need for allowing for reporting on services supporting multiple domains, that you might have information referral calls, you might have case management and transportation, that you want to be able to track that. And that's so core to being able to be successful in serving the individuals, families, and communities. We also have linkages, and linkages I do see that with these new changes, we won't see as high reporting in linkages because a lot of that will be in general agency capacity building. But there are still some linkages that are going to be made, going to meetings, presenting, working on coalitions. And then we have reporting on administration, that the administrative costs for CCG are reported as equivalent to typical indirect costs or overhead. And we give a little bit more guidance on the next page. So if we go to the next page to show what this actually looks like, this is what the new Module 2, Section A, CCG Expenditures by CCG Eligible and C Report looks like. The first thing that I really want to point out here is that the Module 1, the State Administrative Module, that will be reported on a federal fiscal year, October through September. However, this module, we know that there are states out there that have many different reporting cycles, as Jeannie mentioned. So here you're able to report on whatever reporting cycle is relevant for your state. The three most um, critical ones that we have are July through June, October through September, and January through December. And then we get into Table B, the CCG expenditures by domains. We're no longer calling these service categories, we're calling them domains. And now what we've done is that we've taken these domains and we've been able to connect up the whole report. So when you talk about family and individual indicators, they're under domain. The same with community. So you're able to make more of a coalition you're able to make more of a connection between the funding and then the outcome. Some of the new domains that we have, we brought in education and cognitive development, income, infrastructure, and asset building. We have health and social behavioral development, which also includes nutrition, civic engagement and community involvement, 
as I mentioned before, we have our supporting uh, services supporting multiple domains, linkages, and agency capacity. And then separate from that, as we have currently been reporting for many years, we have the CCG funds reported as administration below. And we have a hyperlink to uh, information memorandum 37 that really does talk about that for CCG, admin is something that you truly cannot tie to a program. If you're paying for a case manager's salary that is working on homeless issues, that that would not be admin for CCG. That would be program and predominantly would be probably reported under housing domain. We're going to continue to talk about agency capacity, and this is a whole new section that is incorporating areas that we had traditionally reported in the National Performance Indicators. I'm going to turn this over to Barbara Mooney to discuss. Thanks today. Um, I think you've set the stage well for, for this section. Uh, much of what you've talked about are, is existing uh, information in the IS, and we're building on it here. So if you've reported um, on the previous slide on agency capacity, that you've spent funds on agency capacity, um, you're going to be asked to identify um, activities that um, were funded by CSBG, um, not, not funded by all of your funding sources, but funded by CSBG that you reported on the prior table. So that's important. And um, what are we looking at in terms of agency capacity? Well, the, the key pieces of um, agency capacity as really divine, defined in the organizational standards and in some of the uh, basic core principles of ROMA are community needs assessment, strategic planning, data management and reporting, and training and technical assistance. And those are uh, large areas of agency capacity building, but we've also allowed you to uh, add other areas uh, that you can define. Um, the next slide is just a, uh, a graphic to help you to be, to help you think about those agency capacity elements that I just spoke about that we'll ask you to report on. Um, because we, we want, we're looking at Roma Next Generation as embracing the full Roma cycle, thinking about Roma in the context of all of its activities, it's important for us to show that agency capacity uh, has to do with these kinds of activities that are part of our design. So this is just a little graphic to help you think about how you would look at uh, the needs assessment, strategic planning, the community action plan, the data analysis, and then pulling that all together um, for, for agency capacity building. So this is a, this is a new piece um, uh, that, that will help to strengthen our focus on uh, supporting agency capacity. Um, the, um, Elements, as Jeannie said uh, earlier, uh, we have not eliminated um, the things that we used to collect in the national performance indicators that were outputs and not outcomes. But what we've done is we've moved them together into this module. So um, the hours of training and and technical assistance or the hours of planning or assessment that were done by board members or agency staff will be represented here in this uh, in this chart, um, as will the volunteer hours and the number of volunteers that uh, that were uh, both uh, volunteers, um, uh, general volunteers, and also those hours de devoted donated by individuals who have low income. So um, you'll recognize those as coming from um, the, the NPIs, where they were previously in the NPIs. Um, and then on the next, uh, the next slide, you'll see um, this is also a listing of staff capacity, one of the pieces that we know is important in thinking about um, the agency's ability to achieve results is how well um, are they staffed, what are the qualifications of their staff. And so the, this list is not a, a, a 
all-inclusive list, and so we do have an other at the end of the list, but um, this was a list that was generated by several reviews uh, from the network to uh, to include um, uh, the, some of the major qualifications that staff may have to show that you have um, high-quality staff. And, and then you'll recognize this section as well. It's from uh, it's from the existing uh, IS report. It's it's talking about partnerships and um, uh, collectively working together with other um, kinds of um, uh, entities, uh, nonprofits, space based, and so on. Uh, it's the same concept that we had before, but here we're looking at just the unduplicated number of organizations. Um, there were two columns in the prior reporting, and um, this should greatly simplify the way uh, this this report um, is is developed and the time that it takes to produce it. So um, those are all of the elements from the um, the current or the the IS reporting that have been brought into the agency capacity. And I just want to reinforce what Janae said that this is um, a new focus on agency capacity by having its own module devoted to um, those elements that um, are supportive of uh, of agency capacity building. Turn it back over to you, Jeannie, I think. Yes, thank you, Barbara. So um, you can uh, probably are very familiar uh, with these elements after walking through uh, this module. Um, and, you know, you'll be able to tell immediately what data do you currently report and what data might you need to begin to think about having to collect in a new way, perhaps change your process uh, to report on some of the of the new elements of sections A and B, um, perhaps uh, having the expanded uh, uh, staff training uh, items or um, the way that we're collecting partnership information now might um, uh, compel you to need to make some adjustments to your data collection. Um, but in the end, uh, we still are in the 30-day comment, the final 30-day comment period. Um, we need you, if you're going to make any comments, whether they're positive comments or comments about improvements, to do that before the end of November so that we're all assured that OMB looks at those comments before they review uh, the forms and review all the comments that they have received. So please do that. And um, you can see we have here on us the slide. If you're making comments, you need to send those to the Office of Management and Budget directly. They don't come here to HHS. Uh, if you have questions, um, send those uh, to the address listed here at NASCASP, and we'll um, get back with you right away to answer any questions you may have uh, about items in this module um, uh, and, and, and make sure you have a good understanding before you make any comments and, and really start digging into perhaps uh, reporting. So with that, we appreciate uh, your listening to Module 2 and want to just flag that there will also be recordings for Module 1 and Module 3 and 4, and we encourage you to listen to all those modules. Thank you.